Hey guys, I'm going to go ahead and share this session with a couple of people while people start to join. Welcome. Just give me one moment. We'll get started very soon. Okay, let's see who we got going on here. And when you're here, just like start commenting and say hello so I know everybody's joining. And then I will definitely, I just need to share this in a couple of groups to remind people. We, you know, we've been doing it on Facebook Live for a while, but I still just want to help people out. What's up, Kathy and Christine? Um, hope everybody's having a great um, beginning of their week. All right, so let me pop, pop this to a couple of groups here. I'm almost there. Um, Wisconsin, North Dakota, Northeast, Web Centers. Ooh. Almost there, guys. And cool. All right. I hope everybody's having a great beginning of the week. We're just going to wait a couple, like maybe a minute or two and just chat, and then we're going to get started in about just two minutes. So. Hey, what's up, Christine? You you look, um, excuse me, but you're the beautiful one. <laughs> I look crazy. I have been packing and getting the kids ready for, you know, because we're leaving for Miami, of course. So there's so much to do and so much going on. Um, I just threw a little lipstick on and getting ready to do the Go Now game plan. So that's <laughs> just keeping it real, right? Um, all right. So we've got Jillian, Michelle, Denny, Katie. Oh, my gosh. Patricia, Ger uh, Gerald. Roxanne, Francis, what's up, Fran? Fran Fazio from UMass, how are you? Um, and from Vermont, we have Patty coming in. I hope everybody's having a great start of the week. So um, the show that we have planned for tonight is going to be a lot of fun. Um, the visuals that I have for tonight are actual just things, not necessarily slides or pictures to show. But I'm just really excited about tonight's show because there's a lot of focus on the World Conference, which of course is coming up in just a couple of days. Um, it's not too late to get down there. I have to tell you guys, um, Ryan did not decide to go to his first World Conference until probably one or two days before um, before it was happening. And he just decided that it was the right thing to do. He made the decision and then basically figured out a carpool and all of the arrangements, the staying at the hotels and all of that stuff you know, it just kind of came together. So if you're on the fence about that, I just want you to think about that because I often think back to that that week um, of struggling over whether or not to go and just thinking to myself, what would have happened if he didn't go? What would have happened if he didn't like try to find a way down there and make the effort? I, I just, it's kind of shocking and scary to think about. So um, it's the the event in Miami is is it really is my favorite one really for that reason it was our very first big event that changed our lives um, it's the event that you know uh, where we really got it and we really understood what we were all about and um, in, in terms of a company and where we were going and the support that we had and the networking that we had because we were down there it was just like there's just no way to describe it it was just the best thing ever so. Um, tonight's session, we'll have a lot of focus on that, but when we get to the retailing segment and when we get to the business building segment, um, those segments are going to be a little bit different and just straight up just training. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so the first thing that we want to talk about is it's a social media strategy for while you're in Miami. So, um, you know, of course, as unfranchised owners, um, we always talk about the fact that, you um, you know, we want to keep an 80-20 rule on our social media profiles, right? So simply put, that just means 20% of what we're posting can be business related and 80% can be like personal lifestyle stuff, like just what's going on in your life, your family, you know, great quotes that you love, things like that. There's a really solid reason for that strategy, right? The reason for that strategy is if we're going to use social media to prospect and build relationships with people on our names list, then it's really important that our space, our social media space is welcoming to that kind of an activity, right? So it can't be so like salesy and businessy where if you're reaching out and reconnecting with people and building relationships, they go to your page and they're like, oh my gosh, what are they trying, you know, what are they trying to get me into, right? So that there's, there's a solid strategy for that. However, 
there are exceptions and caveats to that rule. So when you travel to Miami for a business conference, um, that's an exciting time. And we really need to make sure that we're posting a lot and that we're engaging a lot because it creates excitement. Um, you know, we're getting out of like the coldest, um, coldest, <laughs> excuse me, couple of days in, a, you know, I think in history actually in some parts of the country. Um, and we're all flying to Miami, which is, you know, a beautiful place to learn and to grow and to um, basically just educate ourselves about our business so we can be successful, right? And so that's exciting, and it's okay to, to post a little bit more businessy this coming week. It's actually encouraged because you want to create excitement and you want to basically get people to ask you, well, what's that? Why are you down there? What's that all about? Or who's that person that you took a picture with or, or of or whatever? Like all of that stuff is really great. Um, and so today, socially speaking, is going to be kind of twofold. The first thing I want to talk about is the brands that you should be following. So Market America, Shopping Annuity, Shop.com, and all of our brands and majors, Web Centers, Motives, LDB, Isotonics, all of those channels have a full 360 plan of action for how they're going to approach the upcoming event. So I've had the privilege of working with our social media team very closely over the last year. And I have to tell you, every single member of that team is like, their knowledge of our business and what this is all about is just so, it's so deep, it's so profound. And um, the, the amount of effort that goes into making sure that the right content and the right messaging gets put, you know, put out for us, it's just like, it's, it's, it's awesome. And so every single channel has what they call a 360 plan. So how are they going to cover the entire event, meaning what's being said on stage, who said it, um, magic moments, what's going on in the concourse, what's going on with teams in the arena, um, what's going on at the breakouts, who are we celebrating today in terms of success and awards and things like that. So um, the reason I tell you this is because it's really, really important that we as unfranchised owners are following those channels and that we're also engaging with them. So when they're posting out a ton of content over the next week, we need to be liking it, commenting, sharing our experiences and all of that stuff because the more hype that we can bring to those channels, um, the better uh, uh, branding that it is for us as unfranchised owners, right? So that's number one. But then the other thing, the other side of that coin is it's a really great place to learn. You can't be everywhere at once. So you have to remember that at the event, you are sitting in your seat and there's literally like 20 other things going on at booths and going on at various parts of the arena. And so to understand that the, that the different social channels are actually covering all of that stuff, it's a really great thing to check out regardless of where you are because you can't be everywhere at once. Literally, you should see this social media team like, you know, breaking apart and trying to make sure every single breakout is covered so you don't miss anything. Um, along the same lines, just so you know, on blog.unfranchise.com, there is a blog that has all of the channels that you should be following. So just make sure that you go to blog.unfranchise.com and check out the latest blog post. It's all it's already up. It has all the channels on there, who to follow and, and why, so you can see what everybody's going to be covering and all that good stuff. So now let's switch gears and talk about what you should be posting because what you should be posting and sharing is, is different than, say, what the company is posting and sharing. So the company strategy is the company strategy. And yes, you can totally take posts here and there and repost them to your own channels, but I want you to think about what your strategy is as an unfranchise owner because that's got to be a little bit different, right? Because your goal is different and you're looking to build relationships and connect with people in your network. So here's what we recommend that you post. So the first grouping of types of things that you can post is stuff about products, right? So Obviously, we're all tra traveling down to Miami, unless you're lucky enough to live there, right? And we're all packing a ton of travel essentials, right? So I know I go nowhere in the world without my shopping annuity hand sanitizer, right? And I understand that this is not a retailable product, that this is a shopping annuity exclusive product for, you know, unfranchise owners. But here's the deal. When I am posting about my shopping annuity hand sanitizer, that starts conversation. What's that? Where'd you get that? Is it better than Purell? Blah, 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 right? That's that's what we want. 
Um, another thing that you should all have is your shopping annuity sunscreen because unlike Massachusetts and other parts of the country right now, it's going to be pretty sunny out there. It's actually going to be pretty amazing. The weather is supposed to be upper 70s, lower 80s, and lots and lots of sunshine. So while sunscreen is not like high on my radar right now because we're buried in snow and the weather was less than zero last week, it's really high on my radar for next week. Um, I have to say, uh, we got a post today from Martha Tiller Rosser. Um, if you don't follow her, you should. She's, um, she's an amazing unfranchised owner. She does a lot with motives, but her and her family went down a little bit earlier, and they used the sunscreen, um, you know, religiously for the first time. And hours and hours in the blazing sun and not one issue um, to report. So the, the product works really, really well. Um, in addition to traveling with my shopping annuity hand sanitizer as well as my sunscreen, I also have this little bag, and I take this everywhere I go, even when I'm not travel traveling, and in it is my Trim Cafe and my Isotonics Daily Essentials and my Trim Tea and my Awake Shots, my Turn Up, and as well as my um, digestive enzymes and other products that are travel size. So the point is, is that at any given time, you probably will have a lot of product on you. And so use the opportunity to show off your travel size types of products and other products that you bring when you travel in your social media posts. So if you get to like sneak away on Sunday afternoon after a really great um, conference and you get, to the, you get to the beach or whatever, or you're just hanging out by the hotel pool, um, you know, in between whatever, Make sure that you're taking pictures with your shopping annuity sunscreen and things like that and promoting your products on social media in a natural way. Um, another great thing to keep in mind is taking pictures of products in the arena. So I know personally, like, um, I like live, 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 live off the awake shock, shots during conferences. They, that, those things just like send a crazy boost of energy really quickly. So you want to make sure that you have that product in you and take a picture. By the way, if you are in the arena, the lighting can be a little funny, so just turn your flash on um, because then the picture quality will be much better. Um, also, when you purchase your three tickets to the international convention, you get a whole bag of additional products that you can use or sell, right? And so usually in that bottom, that um, is, I think you have like awake shots, there's usually choice bars and things like that. That's another great product to take a picture with is the choice bars because, you know, you're traveling, you're on the go, so rather than eating fast food or just grabbing a bucket of fried chicken in the concourse, it's better to have a quick snack and have a TLS, you know, approved choice bar instead. Um, another great thing is that there are going to be new products at all of the booths. So like all of the, the, the lines of products that are releasing new things will have those available at the booths for testing and things. So I know at the Shopping Annuity booth, we have a number of products on display. We're going to have all the Shopping Annuity products, including ones that you haven't even heard are going to be available for pre-sale, which is exciting. Um, you're going to have Isotonics on display, LDV, DNA. Um, everything is going to be on display, as well as some of our partner store products for consumables. So, you know, if you want to take some really great shots, go up to the shopping annuity booth, borrow a product in the in the booth. You can't leave with it. Take a picture and put it back. Right. So, a really great way to um, you know promote your products and then you have lots of stuff on display. Um, there's also going to be a lot of new product announcements, and you know the the best retailers in the world create excitement about their products. So when a new product comes out, post about it, right? And the best way to post about it, of course, is with um, you know physical product in hand. So like you know if for example um, the new shopping annuity product that's coming out is the charcoal activated shaving cream, right? And it's a premium shaving cream with activated charcoal. And that's going to be available up at the shopping annuity booth for testing, smelling, touching, all of that good stuff, right? And so rather than just posting a generic picture or a generic announcement, we now have this product, go up to the booth and take a picture with it, right? So just create something exciting. All of the standard rules about posting images on social media still apply. Some other really great things to post, and these are the best ones. These generate the most excitement. It's all people-focused. So that means taking pictures and posting them of you and your team or whoever you're with or whoever you've met that are hyped up at the event or whatever. So like people love to see that because you know what? A lot of people when they go to work, 
they don't see a lot of people having fun in an arena with the music playing in the background, enjoying their learning and choosing to be there, paying their own way to be there. It's like a really different concept for a lot of people. So sharing that excitement and sharing that positive energy is a great way to attract people to your page. Um, Take pictures of your meetings after the meetings, your breakouts, your team dinners, lifestyle type of shots. Make sure you get, get nice shots in Miami. The weather is going to be beautiful and, the, and the, the natural light is going to be beautiful. We're not expecting any rain at all, I don't think. Um, and so, you know, great opportunity to get some nice shots. Also, share um, share. Uh, presentations like stage presenters right so I know that the company put, put, um, does put a lot of that out there but if something moves you or you're excited about something that you've heard or you've learned take a picture of the speaker and post it um, and then go ahead and couple that with the, the big takeaway so for example like Lauren does an amazing presentation and she's done it in the past and I, I believe she's gonna have a, well she's got a nice segment um, scheduled for Saturday um, but she's done some really big moments for people I know I, I've been one of them and there's times where she's like up there and just saying something and it just grabs you right so take a picture post it and just share the one thing that like hit you hard in the gut right or when JR's up there and, and a light bulb goes off for you or somebody's up there sharing their their testimony right their testimonial about how the business changed their lives or um, what the event has done for them or whatever take a picture share it you know anything that you can do to bring like attention to what's going on in the arena is going to be a great conversation starter um, lessons learns and quotes from speakers are big celebrity presence is great you know we here's the thing about celebrity presence like it's just it's a great way to leverage excitement right people know who fat Joe is they know who like La La is and you know so when you see them on stage it's oh it, share that share that because you know what Fed Joe ain't showing up to everybody's office on Tuesdays and and giving them a pep talk right and he sure is uh, he sure isn't um, building the business along the side with them too so we're very very lucky to have that kind of um, publicity that we don't even pay for it's just people that love us build with us and believe in what we do um, another big thing to share on social media is success sharing success celebrating success of other people so that's things like when people are getting um awards or have hit a new on franchise le uh, level or when the new million dollar club members are on stage you know giving their tip or even if it's a small win like oh i just you know i'm here with so and so and this is her first event and she just you know uh decided that she's going to major in web centers and got her new web center like whatever it is um, celebrate it you know celebrate other people again that's going to, to, to catch people's attention because it's not every day you're on social media and you see people bragging on their colleagues that's just not a thing in the world that we live in today but it is a thing in market America and we need to make sure that we're all contributing to that um, another great thing is magic moments and having fun so again it's all about positive energy and sharing what's going on in there and getting people like engaged and wanting to know more about what's going on great 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 opportunity that we all have to bring attention to our business to our vibe to our positive network and of course to our products right so make sure that you guys are posting keep the lighting in mind and again all the other rules still apply um, okay, so we're going to switch gears right now. We're going to talk a little bit about um, a product, and I didn't show this um, yet because I, this is in my travel bag, by the way. I have this really cute little travel bag, and it's all my products, my Motives products. My It's my LDV rose, uh, respect, Refresher hand sanitizer. You name it, it's probably in there. But the product of today the, um, is going to be, for Consumer Corner, the Rose Refresher by Lumiere de Vie. So this is another newer product, um, and it, it just recently came out. It's really good. You can spray it on your face, over your makeup, or at first, it's very gentle. It's really, really relaxing. It helps to moisturize and soothe your skin. Um, it's infused with hydration, so it's very, very, very hydrating. So a lot of us are going to be flying to the event, right? And so this is a really nice, handy little thing to keep in your carry-on. It is um, a small enough um, ounce. I can't really, I can't remember how much the ounces are. One fluid ounce, so it's under you know what you're allowed for a carry-on. Easy to throw in your carry-on. 
you will be happy that you had it. <laughs> so I always keep this in there because I always get so dried out on flights. It doesn't matter how much water I drink, I'm always just coming off and my skin feels some kind of way. So um, keep this in your carry-on for that reason. Also really great for brightening the skin, more radiant complexion, supple look, refined skin, perfect pick-me-up to refresh your look throughout the day. I honestly use this thing so many times. I'm gonna. I'm not even exaggerating. Hold on one second. I have like two more. This is a new product, and um, I'm already on my second bottle, and I have two more um, in in the reserve because I don't want to run out of it. Like that's how amazing this is. It just makes you feel so good and relaxed. Um, and so I want to remind everybody that. Um, on unfranchise.com, you can read all of the frequently asked questions and all about the ingredients and stuff, so that's all on there. Um, but I want to talk to you a little bit about hacks for the product, like ways to use this product that maybe you didn't really think about. So the obvious use of this product is on your face to brighten it up, to add a little hydration and give your skin a little pick-me-up, right? So that's the main use for this product, and it's a really good use for the product. I do that several times a day. But there's also additional things that you can do. So the ingredients in here, um, because of the ingredients in there, it offers other opportunities as well. There's aloe uh, leaf juice, which of course is rich in nutrients, um, and all kinds of other great stuff that I can't pronounce, but I'm going to tell you what it's done for me because that I can be very truthful and organic about. So uh, you can read about the science on franchise.com. So the hacks, add a few drops into the water chamber of your iron when you're ironing your clothes. So fun little story is I just got the coolest jumpsuit ever, but I'm really short. I'm only 5'2", and so I needed to get it hemmed, but I don't know how to sew. So, you know, here we are. We have a little bit of a dilemma, and um, I really want to wear this jumpsuit because it makes me feel, like, powerful, and it's also nice and warm, so in the arena I won't be cold. Um, so, you know, Ryan came back and he bought me those little, like, tape hems. So cool. Um, and I remembered that you could put this in your iron. So I put a couple of drops of this in my iron. And as I was ironing on my hems, I put it on there. And then I also ironed the rest of my jumpsuit with it. And the whole thing just smells so good. And um, it's going to feel really nice on my skin as well. So this is that's a really cool little trick. I never really thought to do anything with the water that's in my iron for ironing my clothes. So take a couple of drops of this, put it in the water chamber of the iron, and your clothes will smell super fresh and really um, also have some soothing effects. Another thing um, that people are doing is they're putting it in their conditioner. Um, again, because of the hydration component of, of the product and how hydrating it can be for your skin, that same effect can also be applicable to your hair. Um, it's also really good for acne relief. Um, I'm 35 and I just shared my age. I think that's something that women don't do or something, but I'm 35 and I still struggle with um, breakouts. It's crazy. Like I have acne scars on my skin and it's like every other week I'm just waking up and just hoping that I'm not going to have like a crazy breakout. Um, and sometimes it can get really red and inflamed and painful. Um, that's another reason I love this product. It's, it's not just something that just kind of feels fresh. For me, the, 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 it's, it's like a calming effect. It can help calm angry skin. Um, anything with breakouts and inflammation, of course. Um, it can, it, it, that varies on different things, but the same thing applies to sunburn. So if you have your shopping annuity um, sunscreen, hopefully you don't need your LDB rose refresher to soothe that sunburn, but it can be helpful for that as well. Uh, some people are doing it with homemade facial masks as well. Um, so if you've done it, if you've ever made one of these before, it's kind of fun. Um, Chippy flour and turmeric and also sandalwood powder. So if you have all of that going on and you add some rose refresher as well, it can be really great. Feel uh, very, very hydrating for the skin. And if you add a little bit of apple cider vinegar in it, that's also an um, astringent. So that's really good for any of the other stuff that you want to get out of there. Um, also a really great makeup remover. Mix it with some coconut water. Um, it is the best way to remove your makeup because it's coming off and then it's all that nice stuff that you get from the coconut oil and the, um, the benefits for your skin from the rose water as well. And then the last thing I'm going to share with you as a hack is a pillow spray. So have you ever been to like a, 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 you know, a hotel or a lot of bed and breakfasts do this where you go to lay down in, um, on your pillows and they just smell so darn good like lavender or rose or whatever. 
Um, I never thought to do that in my own home, but uh, what a great idea. So the same type of thing before you go to bed, um, spray your pillow. So, and you'll have that nice, like relaxing, um, uh, effect from the from the product as well. So make sure that you um, go to unfranchise.com, you log in and you grab this product because it's not just for women and it's certainly not just for skin pick me up. Um, although I do use it several times a day for that, it works it works beautifully for that. But you can use it for a lot of other things as well, um, and it fits nice in a carry on bag. So for the shopping annuity hack today, we're going to switch gears a little bit. I want to just talk to you a little bit about dining out. So um, a lot of us are going to be dining out quite a bit for the next couple of days. Um, and so we just want to remind people that, you know, it's not um, an excuse to not fund your shopping annuity. It's an opportunity to fund your shopping annuity. So there's a couple of ways to do this. One of them is restaurant.com. Um, restaurant.com has 27.5 percent IVV. So that's that's quite a bit of IVV. And also keep in mind that restaurant.com also generally sells gift certificates at less of what their value is. So for example, you can get a $50 gift certificate to a restaurant sometimes for $35 or $40. So you're paying less, but you still get the full 50. On top of that, if you do it through your website, you can also earn 27.5 percent IVV. So if you are going to um, you know, check out some restaurants in the area. I'm gonna talk about Shop Local, of course, but um, if they are not a Shop Local um, partner, then check out restaurant.com. There might be some additional options for you there. Um, another one I wanna to talk to you about, uh, Lisa Sears introduced me to. So we were putting together some really cool examples for achieving Shopping Unity Master Member, and Lisa brought uh, her t my attention to the gift card center on shop.com, and there were things on there for Panera and Domino's all up to 18% IVV. And I was like, wow, we order Domino's like more than we should, um, but we do. And I just didn't even realize that. So how cool is that? And you know a lot of you are going to be ordering Domino's after a late night at some point. So make sure you go through your website and you get, um, you get it from yourself. And then finally is Shop Local. So that's the obvious one. If you go to your website and you, and you go to Shop Local page, right, you can look up all of the participating restaurants that are there and you can get an idea for, um, you know, what types of food there are. You can see reviews. You can see how much IVV you could be earning. Um, and, you know, just keep in mind, of course, that you want to make sure that your card is linked and set up so that when you are going um, to these restaurants and paying with your linked card, you're getting the credit. Um, another really great tip is download the shop.com app um, to use at, um, Shop Local on the go and link your card anytime, anywhere with the link card feature. It's on there. Um, another thing I love about the Shop Local is when you have it on your phone, like you'll get little um, messages that says you're coming up you know, or the shop.com app is you'll get messages that say you're near a place where you could be earning IBV. So make sure you download that. Uh, easy way to get some IBV while you're on the go. And we all know that that's going to be the case next week. So let's switch gears again. So we have three more segments to talk through. I'm gonna give you a little bit of retailing tip, a little business building, and then I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the agenda and what to expect at the event. So retailing, we're gonna talk about traditional versus attraction marketing. Um, because at the end of the day, people don't like to be told what to buy, right? But they like engaging in that relational experience and they like um, having their problem solved. And so I just want us to keep this in mind because especially this week, we are gonna be posting about business a lot, right? Like we made that agreement at the beginning of the session that it's oh, that that's something that we wanna do. And if you have any questions, by the way, keep, you know, keep them in the comments. Um, I will answer them as I go. I'm like kind of scrolling down and seeing all your feedback, which is great. Any qu uh, questions, make sure you're sending them in there. But like we said at the beginning of the session today, we are gonna be posting a lot more this week, right? And this, this lesson applies to all business posts and all retailing posts going forward, and really conversations in person and online. Um, so what is the difference? Well, traditional marketing, you know, employs aggressive advertising tactics, right? So, you know, they their whole idea is that they're gonna put their message out there. They are essentially interrupting the customer to get their attention, right? It's it's a very like 
one directional, me tell you something and you listen. Um, there's usually a strong sales pitch associated with it. We are telling the customer to buy something and we have to persuade the customer. So the reason you have to persuade the customer and the reason you have to tell a customer to buy something in that tactic is because you are interrupting them in the first place to get their attention. So you're not trying to necessarily solve any problem that you're aware of, you're just saying, you know, here is the, the, this product A, you need to buy it because buy it here, right? So it's like me interrupting you and telling you what to do. And people don't like that anymore. And you know, the, the marketing trends have very, very much shifted. Um, it, people are way, way more into relationships, talking, um, and value there, right? And really a lot of that is due to the internet. You know, people don't need to be marketed at. There, you know, information is available to us at the, you know, click of a button with the internet. So there's really no need for someone to be marketing at us all day, every day. We don't make our buying decisions that way because we research products and we can, you know, make our buying decisions a different way, more educated way, right? So attraction marketing, which is what is the preferred method, is where customers are seeking the benefits of a product and a service. Um, they are seeking the solution to a problem. They already know they have a need, meaning you don't have to convince them that they need something because they already know they have a need. The customer is at that point because they are seeking the solution and learning, they are the ones usually asking to buy rather than you telling them to buy. And then on top of that, um, they are being educated rather than sold to. They enjoy that part of it because they're learning and they're feeling, you know, part of the process instead of just a one directional conversation, right? And so all of that is, if, if you just think about that, you take a step back and you think about yourself, um, which would you prefer, you know, as a customer? Would you rather be marketed at or would you rather be educated and talked to and help to solve a problem, right? And so just keep that in mind when you're posting or you're having conversations with people about products or the business. So first of all, ask yourself, what are you offering, right? How can you help somebody with their pain, problem, or frustration? Where can you reach them online? And what are the competing messages that they might be receiving online? And you know, all of that just is part of, of the process. So understand what you're offering in the first place. The second thing to ask yourself and to understand is the difference between sharing a feature or a benefit, right? So if you're sharing the feature of a product, then it's like a physical characteristic of said product or service. If you're sharing a benefit of the product, it's what the feature does for the user. So let me just give you two quick examples because um, I think that this is probably the most important lesson in retailing that we can learn. Um, because people don't buy the features, they buy the benefits. They, they read the features and that might um, ultimately be like some, The, the, the average consumer. So, the button, the garage door opens automatically, right? So, nothing about that is very exciting. Um, it's generally what, you know, people assume would happen with a garage door opener. You push the button, the door opens. But selling, if you switch it and you tell a different story and you're selling the benefit of that, maybe in your commercial you're showing you know, a family um, of four with two young children had just got back from grocery shopping and it's pouring out. And they're pulling into their garage, they push the button, the garage door opens, the whole family rolls in, the car parks, they come out, they have the two little kids and all the groceries and nobody's wet, uncomfortable, or um, dealing with all the weather. Right, so that's the difference. Which one is gonna be more inspiring? Someone that's coming at you talking about the features of the garage door opener, push the button, the door opens, and it goes up a little slide thingy track or whatever, or is it the story that shares the benefit of having one? Wouldn't it be great if you didn't have to worry about weather and you could just park your car safely and just kind of bypass all of that and then um, you know, sharing the benefit of the garage door opener? Right, so obviously scenario two is more inspiring and it's also easier for a consumer to understand. And if the consumer can understand that type of, a, of an example or, or understand um, a benefit, 
then that keeps the conversation going longer. If they're if they're lost or not feeling like they understand what's happening, the, the conversation is done, right? So um, when you think about that in terms of isotonics, what does that mean? Well, the feature of uh, isotonics OPC three, the features of that would be taking a deep dive into the into the ingredients, right? Of course, we all want to be able to talk intelligently about the isotonic delivery system because that is what sets us apart. Um, and so that's that's an that's a caveat to this rule. But we don't want to take a deep dive into the ingredients right away. What we want to do instead is simply share what the product can potentially do for somebody, what it's done for you, sharing sharing a testimonial of what it has done, right? So people like don't respond to me saying, you know, um, here's OPC3 and here's how my deoxyribonucleic acid has responded to pignogenol, right? That's a scientific conversation. It's it's silly. It makes no sense. The, the customer can't understand it. But I can say, you know, I've had dog allergies my entire life. And, um, you know, we got a dog recently. And so I doubled up on OPC3. And I've noticed that um, I've been able to not only hang out with my dog, pet him, he sleeps in our bed and like, you know, on my lap all day long every day. And I don't have the same allergic reaction that I had before. It really helped with my allergies. Um, so I'm sharing a story. So that story is going to get me a lot farther than, say, um, you know, pignogenol, which is a great ingredient. And there's a lot to say about it. And some people can talk about it and make it really interesting, but most people can't. So share the first or the third party testimonial. That is the last tip about it is so understanding what you're offering, um, understanding your tactic, right? Are you going to be an aggressive traditional marketer? Are you going to be a, new, a newer, more cooperative attraction marketer? You want to be into attraction marketing. That is way more conversational. It's easier. People like it. It feels good. And there's really no expertise. It's really all centered around solving problems and sharing stories and testimonials. So whether that first, that testimonial is your own and it's a firsthand testimonial or whether it's a third-party testimonial, say, you sharing with your friend about my experience with my allergies and my dog and OPC3, that's a third-party testimonial. Either of those scenarios is fine. Just keep all of this in mind this week when you're posting on social media so that when, you're, when you are posting about business and you are posting about your team and what's going on and who's on stage and the product in the arena and all the other great stuff we talked about earlier, you're doing it in a way that is friendly and um, that shares stories and when people are asking you questions, you're not just coming hard at them trying to sell, you're really trying to attract people. You want to attract people that have an interest so that they are the ones asking you, what's that? What's it for? How can it help me with X, Y, Z? Simple as that. Okay, so we're gonna switch over, and guys, I'm sorry, I meant to take all of these enzymes before the session, but the time has just been flying, so. Mm. So anyway. We're going to switch over to uh, business building, and what I want to talk about just for a couple of minutes is the new Master Business Building Workshops. Um, these events have been designed by our executive sales team, so it's, you know, Dennis Franks, Kevin Buckman, myself, Charlie Bayer, Phil Guido, Jim Winkler, Andrew Weissman, and Dana Galpern. And um, we've met as a group for almost six months putting together this master action-based learning plan. And so throughout the day, um, there are over 25 activities that the, the attendees of the event participate in. So the difference between this and say a local seminar, um, which is great and obviously serves its purpose and is wonderful and everybody should go, the difference between this and a regular seminar is that you have to participate throughout the day. Um, and so that idea was really born for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's just a proven fact that adult, adults are kinesthetic learners. There's three types of learners, right? The first one is visual, people that learn best by seeing. There's auditory learners, people that learn best by hearing. And then there's kinesthetic learners, which are people that learn best by experiences or, exper um, or doing or interacting. And so since we are all adults here and uh, most of us are going to benefit from the kinesthetic learning, we thought it would be helpful and beneficial to have um, a learning environment that really kept that in mind. Um, and so what we do is the agenda is broken down into several topics. There's a welcome and wor a workshop breakdown. We just start off by explaining how the day is going to work. We talk to you about 
what a workshop is going to look like, what is expected, and how, how we're going to start and stop, and just the basic logistics of things. Then from there, the next section is called why and goal statement. And that is broken down into your big picture why, how to write a goal statement, and create a 90-day action plan. But what's really great about it is there's only a couple of slides on each of them, maybe two to three slides, and then there's like 15 minutes of doing it together. Um, there's different types of workshops. There's role playing. There's group role playing where everybody's practicing with a partner, and it, that's honestly one of my favorites because everybody gets the experience, um, and nobody hears what you're saying, and you're not in front of the room. So it's like really a great way to learn. Um, and then there's actual doing. There's individual work um, as well. So like. For example, in the next section, we have um, leading by example, exa establishing your foundation, ways to become a product of the product, a product of the program, and GMTSS. So in those segments, um, you know, there are activities that we do to help you identify additional products you could be using, or um, tips for shopping on shop, things like that. And you, or the GMTSS is we're filling out your calendar together. That's not necessarily a group activity, that's a solo activity. Um, the section after that is base 10, establishing a portfolio of customers. So we teach you one tactic for getting one new customer per week with trial size marketing. Um, we do role playing on that. Um, we prepare, we download the materials, and we actually get it, put it to work. Um, there's a section on building share of customer. Um, and we, we shine a light on the coupon marketing tool. And in that tool, um, we talk specifically about, um, and not only do we talk about it, but we all send our first coupon out together. And it was interesting because when we did it in the last one in Pittsburgh, Charlie and I did it together, um, one of our attendees raised their hand and they were like, wow, I, I got two sales from that before the end of the day. And it was something that they didn't even know they had. But because, again, it wasn't just a to-do list type of thing where like, okay, here's the coupon marketing admin, here's how you access it, and here's how you use it, go do it later, where you forget to do it, you're just doing it in the class, you're getting it done. So there's all this stuff in motion. And then the last part of the day is called Seven Strong Creating Leverage. And for that, it's prospecting, names lists, approaches, call workshops, conducting appointments, how to show the plan, how to host an HPP, sponsoring, follow-up, APC, ongoing activities, and ongoing accountability. And again, each of those topics are, are coupled with specific activities that you participate in so that you leave that, that workshop with uh, either results already, um, experience under your belt, and a lot of stuff in motion. So it's really taking that magic um, of the call workshop, right? People spend $1,000 to go on the Moving Up seminar, and the, really the biggest thing I hear every time from anybody that's ever gone, myself included, is the most valuable part of that, call, of that uh, Moving Up seminar is the call workshop, because you leave the boat with appointments in your schedule. So we took the magic of that and we sprinkled it on every single part of the business. We did not reinvent the wheel. It was not about coming up with some crazy new way to do this. It was simply let's just do it all together in one space, help each other out, learn, and support each other through it so that we all leave with what I like to call a profitable mess. Lots of things going on, stuff in your calendar, and like you're really like all you have to do is follow up, right? This the appointments are booked, the contacts are made, everything is ready. So I want to just bring your attention to a couple that are coming soon because there's some in uh, February and March I want to bring your attention to. Seats are limited, and some of these might even already be sold out. But if you know anybody in these areas, I highly recommend that you get one, um, you get them to attend. Or if you want one in your area, reach out to any one of us on the executive sales team and we can talk about you know, potentially doing one out there. So the next one um, is Sunday at Minneapolis. That one's gonna be conducted by myself and Jim Winkler together. You're, oh, by the way, there's two executive sales team members together pairing up to teach this. So it's ni a nice, uh, you get two different uh, perspectives throughout the day. Um, that one's in Minneapolis. I hear it's gonna be pretty warm. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> from there, on Sunday, February 24th, there's one in Atlanta, and that's going to be Dennis Franks and Ruben Yara. On uh, Sunday the 24th as well, there's going to be one in Clearwater, Florida, and that's going to be with Phil Guido and Kevin Buckman. So excited uh, for them to get out down uh, to Florida. So. Uh, after that, you've got one coming up in March, um, Phil Guido and I believe Charlie Bear.
That's going to be in Rochester, Buffalo, New York, March 10th. And then also on March 10th, there's going to be one in Phoenix, Arizona with Dennis Franks. So um, all of these will be talked to in more detail at the World Conference. Um, and actually, Dennis and Kevin are going to uh, talk in detail about this on Saturday during the event. So make sure you're in your seats for that um, so you can learn about what that's like. And um, I believe they're also going to be even conducting one or two activities with the audience. So you'll get to experience what that day is like and participate. Um, so that leads me, by the way, to the very last thing, which is just the agenda. So the agenda has been released. Uh, you should have gotten it on Franchise News, an, e or an email today, um, with a link to download the agenda. It is completely action-packed. Um, and I will let you, um, you know, kind of go through this. But one little tip is I highly recommend that you look specifically at the breakouts um, because the breakouts are you know way more in depth than what you're gonna see for like the the smaller segments on stage and it's a great opportunity to dive deeply into different things so if I were you I would I would print the agenda like I have and then just grab um, a highlighter and just highlight all of the uh, breakout sessions that you would like to um, that you would like to attend or that maybe you know people that should attend um, I can tell you that on Thursday night, you have um, the Mandarin speaking on franchise owner Coring. Um, you have the Motives uh, breakout with Lisa Martin um, at 8. Also at 8, there's a breakout on Deductor. Um, at 9.15, you have one with MA Web Centers. And I have to tell you, I know I've said Web Centers a couple times today. It's just on my mind. They have a brand new product called Morse Connect. And I think it could be game changing for us in terms of follow up and in terms of customer management. So, because um, we can actually purchase that product as unfranchised owners as well. It's a text marketing product and it allows you to text um, campaigns to your customers and it also allows you to interact with them. So, really great tool for your own personal portfolio of customers, prospects, as well as your organization and your team. So, I highly recommend you check it out there because. I know that the breakout is going to be very heavy on that. Um, Nutrametrics is also on Thursday night. On Friday night, your breakouts are the Mandarin product training, the shopping annuity one, which is going to feature, I just want to give you a little highlight on that, it's going to feature a panel of just a small group of people. You're going to have Elizabeth Weber, um, Carl Eklund, um, Ryan Stack, and Lenny Allen, and that's it. So four original shopping annuity ambassadors, and they are going to be sharing lots and lots of tips about how to build the business with the shopping annuity. So it's it's really gonna be tying together all the pieces and helping you to create a very, very well-rounded approach to business building and retailing as well with the shopping annuity at the core. So I highly recommend you get to that one. On Saturday night, the breakouts are uh, affiliate Publisher Network, which is great if you guys know any influencers, that's a great one for them. Malaysia Coring, Shop Financial, and then of course um, the After Party as well, which you should go to. Because at the After Parties is where you get to actually talk to people and meet and network and have like, you know, conversations with people that are successful in the business that maybe you wouldn't have had the chance to meet otherwise, right? Um, so, with that being said, I don't want to deep dive too much into the agenda, but I do want to say and share one last thing. Um, over the last year, I have seen, I've been very, very pr privileged and blessed um, to be able to work closely with our, um, our corporate team on, you know, the evolution of the shopping annuity. And it's pretty amazing, actually, like watching, you know, how JR works and how Lauren works and Mark works, and they're all just so insanely smart. Like, they, they see things like 20 steps ahead of where other people are. And sometimes, like, they'll say things, and it'll, it'll take me a second, and I'll just go, okay, now I see what, yeah, okay, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. And I'm, like, having to keep up because they just think so fast. Um, but I have to say, like, there's a couple of things that I think I just want to share that have really stuck out to me is like them and the team, you know, Chris Fettycord, Eugene, Michael Brady, John Bivers, like the whole team has been so insanely like dedicated to making things move faster. And so, you know, there, you're, I don't want to give anything away, so I'm not going to tell you specifically, but here's what I will tell you is that over the last several um, months, really year or more, there's been so much movement 
in terms of development for the shopping annuity, the unfranchised business, and shop.com, all three places to make business building easier, retailing easier, and also just the shopping annuity itself easier. Um, so much movement that at this event, you're going to hear about a lot of things that are live. And I'm so excited for that because, like, they – they see so much further ahead, and it's just so cool to see so much stuff already be done. Yes, there's going to be other things that are coming soon, but pretty much everything that we hear about is going to be this like really exciting unveiling of something new that's happened or some new enhancement or some new positive change to make things better, and it's live. And I just find that so incredibly like exciting and um, inspiring, and I don't want to say any of the things that they're going to say because I don't want to ruin it. But I can tell you, you don't want to miss a second of this event because there's going to be so much positive stuff that is that is being announced. I, my mind is blown. Um, I was talking to Elizabeth uh, very briefly the other day, and we were walking some of the ambassadors through some of the changes that were happening. And like the excitement level is higher than it's ever been. And it's because people are like, oh my gosh, all that stuff that we've been talking about, I can see it, it's happening, it's here, it's here, this is crazy, like it's happening. The IVV pay plan is literally about to explode to the point where I honestly, like after seeing the changes that have been made, I honestly could like say that people may make IVV checks before they make their BV checks, which is like, I know that sounds like crazy to people because it's been the other way around, but with all of the changes that the company has made, um, all of the things, the, the hard choices they make, the good choices that they make to protect us and to position us for success, it's possible. And um, I can't wait for you to see it. So um, make sure that you are in your seats for everything, that you're not missing out because so much good stuff is being announced. Um, I, I'm just so excited. Like everybody is really on, on their game and really happy to be there and there's a lot to talk about. So. Um, have a great rest of your week. Fly safely um, when you're getting down to Miami, and we'll see you there. Have a great rest of the week, guys. Bye-bye.